Chapter 6 in your uh, Surf Safe Food Sanitation class, we'll talk about the flow of food, purchasing and receiving, why it's important, what we can do, how you can check things. Again, this is not only useful for the food service, but also as a consumer, and so we'll go over many strategies in uh, this uh, pretty short and uh, abbreviated lecture. How can we check the temperature of various types of foods? Okay, Meats, poultry, fish, and a lot of times if you can, are looking at a retail case, you're going to be able to find a temperature on there. Uh, if you have things at home, or let's say that you are working in a food operation, if you're getting in raw materials, use uh, a thermometer, stem, or a probe, thickest part of the food usually into the center. If I was doing a beef carcass, I would stick it into the round. Uh, that's the thickest part of the carcass. And look for temperature to be 41 or less in those types of objects. You can see here on the slide they're checking a chicken breast and also a whole fish. So they're taking into the thickest part of the flesh, make sure it doesn't poke all the way through, uh, make sure it's just the sensing part of the thermometer is able to record the temperature. What about raw food? For example, modified atmosphere packaging or MAP, vacuum packaging, sous vide uh, food. Basically those things are already packaged. You can't stick stuff into the middle of it. If you see there, the vitamin D milk bags, those are common in cafeterias. Uh, obviously, we can't stick something into it, but if you have two packages, put a thermometer between them, okay? Or you can fold the package around the thermometer stem or to the probe, which you can see uh, in the milk uh, bulk bag on the right. The left has uh, two basically vacuum-packed packages of bacon. So you can do that with deli meats. You can do it with vacuum-packaged foods, frozen foods, any of those things. Other types of packaged foods that we can't avoid getting into. Um, that would be if you look at the, uh, if you get cartons of milk in. Uh, the idea of the carton is to keep the temperature in, keep it uh, warm out. You're probably going to have to open one and, and subsequently maybe not serve it to other people, consuming yourself, or throw it away. Um, probably the big thing there would be to throw it away. The other thing, if you're checking uh, things like, uh, it's hard to tell what that is on the right there in your picture, some type of a salad, or if it was cottage cheese in bulk. Basically insert the thermometer into the food itself. Um, sometimes they're single-use containers, sometimes they're not. It really depends on the situation, but uh, those are definitely usable, again, at least uh, those types on the right. You know, when you receive food and inspect things, it can go down to the consumer level when you're getting things from the supermarket, making sure we don't have dented cans, make sure we don't have leaks, tears, uh, contaminated food, adulterated food, something that has, you know, uh, a mouse in it or something. But, uh, and that goes to all up to the you know, supermarket receiving food in to uh, the business bringing raw materials in to make sausage or hams or something. Make sure you have people that are trained to properly receive, inspect, and store food. Make sure that they know what things that, you know, what are our specifications for it. This is what the order says, this is what we got. Um, if something's wrong, the count's wrong, the weight's wrong, you can reject it. Uh, make sure you have the proper people assigned for things instead of just some random person. So most places will have policies and procedures for uh, accepting or rejecting deliveries temperature-wise, the cleanliness of the, the truck, um, all the way down to you know consumer making sure we don't buy things that is not good for us and they are acceptable. Alright, receiving temperatures are probably one of the most important things you can look at in food. Again, whether you're buying as a consumer, whether it's a company bringing in raw materials to make other types of food products, you know, if they're making hamburgers or sausages or something like that, or if they're making chocolate milk. But if they're supposed to, the TCS is temperature control for safety or potentially hazardous foods, make sure to see those cold foods at 41 degrees or below, unless there is something that's specified. Um, that eggs can be at 45 or below. Okay. On the flip end, if we're getting warm food in, if you're serving warm food, and you'll see some of these in subsequent chapters, or this one, if you're serving these types of foods, make sure the warm foods are at least 135 or higher. Okay. To get frozen food, it's got to be frozen, uh, basically hard as a rock, don't want any ice crystals, uh, don't want any frozen water in the bottom of it, that means it's probably been thawed and refrozen. Look for those simple signs, ice crystals, Frozen puddles in the bottom are sheer signs that frozen food has been thawed and refrozen. Never want to accept something like that. Okay. Look at the packaging on your products. You know, anything that have 
uh, tears, holes, punctures, uh, cans if they have swollen ends, if they're rusted, if they have a ton of dents in them, uh, broken cartons or seals, a dirty wrapper. You can see this high gluten flour has some type of stain on it. You have no idea what that could be. It could be from a detergent. It could be from a sanitizer. Uh, if it has a leak, if you have something that's wet and shouldn't be, water stains, uh, signs of any type of infestation or pest damage, whatever those could be. Look also at the dates on them. Expired code or used by dates. You can't accept those types of things. And again, this goes all the way from you know, the wholesale level to the retailer to us as consumers looking at these products saying, should we really accept this, even if it's discounted? Some things are fine like that and some things are not. Yeah, a lot of it's really dependent on the individual purchasing them. Uh, but for business to sell those things, uh, it's highly unacceptable to any type of regulatory authority to sell those types of things. Also, you got to look at the quality of the food that you're purchasing. Uh, you should reject food if it has an abnormal color, have an abnormal or unpleasant odor. I mean, those things are sheer signs of some type of contamination and could lead to not only deterioration, but potentially a foodborne illness. You know, with meat, fish, or poultry, if you see something that's slimy, sticky, or it looks really dry, uh, especially if it's poultry or meat, they will get that slimy or stickiness to it. If it has very soft flesh that leaves an imprint when it's touched, it usually means it is old, or it's probably outdated, which also gives it a risk of having some type of bacterial contamination on it as well. So look for those things. On the poultry wings, uh, if they have dark tips, if they're sticky under the wings, those are all signs of some contamination and poor product quality. We should avoid those types of things, as they could lead to some potential foodborne health. Here we get to eggs, which I just talked about a couple of slides, slides ago. Most people, when they go to the supermarket, they check their eggs to make sure they're clean, unbroken. Same thing with anybody that receives them. If they're in the shell, they have to be at 45 degrees, which there's a temperature I talked about a couple of slides ago, or lower. Okay. If you have those that are liquid, frozen, dehydrated, they've got to be pasteurized. You've got to be exposed to some type of uh, heat treatment to kill microorganisms. It's required by law. They have to have a USDA inspection mark on it as well. And so they also have to go with the grade standards uh, associated with eggs. Okay. So those liquid eggs uh, could be big bulk eggs for like a cafeteria, but they also could be like egg beaters you're going to find in your supermarket. Okay. So eggs, make sure we check them clean, not broken, 45 degrees or less, and then see what type of eggs they are and go from there. When you're looking at inspecting and getting milk products, they have to be refrigerated as well, 41 degrees or less, and less specified by law. There's some type of cheeses that wouldn't have to be, so those would be covered under the uh, dairy products. They do need to be in this country pasteurized and uh, comply with USDA grade A standards, grade A dairy products are what we use in this country, so that is uh, what it has to be unless they're going into other products. Um, an example of another product not grade A would be maybe a, a milk replacer for like calves or cats or dogs or something you find at a, a pet store, those types of things. So again, any type of the, the dairy products unless specified elsewhere, got to be 41 or less. Some ex example of something that wouldn't be is like Parmesan cheese, okay, it is not a refrigerated product, it is a cheese product, it's a dairy product, so it's not going to have to be refrigerated. Let's look at something like shellfish, if it's raw and shucked. So basically if you find shrimp that doesn't have the shell on it, okay, if they are packaged in non-returnable containers, the containers have to be labeled, you can have the packer's name, whoever basically packaged them, address, it's got to have a cer certification number. If they are less than one half gallon, they've got to have a best if used by or sell by date on them. Have to have that. Okay. If they're bigger than that, which I haven't seen unless you probably go to some of your coastal areas that have these types of things, then they have to have the date that the shellfish were shucked. And basically, look at you know the wholesomeness of these things. You can tell if they're slimy, if they have a smell to them, if they're quote unquote fishy. Uh, you'll know it uh, if they're really soft, just like on other types of meat products. Those are sure signs of uh, potential low quality. Maybe you have gone to certain places like Red Lobster. A lot of supermarkets used to have the live uh, shellfish tank, basically have the lobsters in them. 
And basically those fish have to be received with the identification tags on the shell stock. Okay. They have to remain attached to the delivery container until all of the shellfish have been used. The employees have to write on the tags the date that the last shellfish was sold or served from the container, again, Red Lobster or supermarket. And also, those tags have to be kept for 90 days from the date written on them. Okay, so they have to be kept for a long period of time. Any type of shellfish coming in, if they're muddy, they have a broken shell, they're dead, you do not want to consume them. Those lobsters have to be, for example, steamed live. Same thing with crawfish. Okay. Uh, there's just something that happens when they're dead and you actually cook them. They have to be basically boiled or steamed when they are alive. And that is just kind of a regulation. To water your produce is not going to be refrigerated. Uh, a lot of places may, and they may have cold water that's sprayed on throughout the day. But uh, the biggest thing is your potentially hazardous foods. Anything that becomes cut as a potential for contamination, spiced melons, cut tomatoes, must be at 41 or lower. Or if you have a prepackaged juice product, okay, usually you have a prepackaged juice have to be supplied from somebody with a HACCP plan. Okay. Most of these types of containers, these juice containers, have to be treated, for example, pasteurized like apple juice, um, probably not necessarily orange juice, but I'm sure about apple juice for sure, to prevent, eliminate, or reduce, reduce pathogens. So. Uh, certain things that you know a school cafeteria would really have to be cognizant of is what type of juice containers they're using, what type of treatments been added to them. All right, that is the end of the abbreviated chapter six. Make sure you do your exam. Look for anything in your book that uh, may not be covered in this lecture, as it will be provided for you, and then turn in the quiz.